Hey everybody, it's Dr. Dan. Uh, so we're going to keep going on. Uh, in the last video, I showed you how to make this LED circuit. And our next problem is we want to make this battery tester circuit. Okay, and so it's kind of the same thing as the LED circuit where it has a bunch of LEDs and resistors, but it also has these Zener diodes that we're going to include. And so I explain about how a Zener diode works. I'm not going to go ahead and read that to you, but we just need to go follow the circuit diagram, okay? Where we want to basically have a bunch of rows of Zener diodes and LEDs uh, and then hook it up to our power so we can see um, how well our battery's working. Okay, so I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna delete what I have on this current breadboard, the flashlight circuit. And we're gonna go ahead and see if we can build this thing. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and say, okay, you know what? For my power, I'm gonna go ahead and use these two rails. I'm gonna have negative power and positive power. And so I can go ahead and stick my battery in here now, just like that. Okay, that's the negative and the positive of the battery. And so what I see is we go from positive battery, we go through a resistor, right? Then we go through this LED, right? And so this is the anode of the LED and this is the cathode of the LED, which then the cathode of the LED hooks to the cathode of the Zener diode. So the de Zener diode is actually flipped the quote unquote wrong direction. And then the anode of the Zener diode goes to the negative here. Okay, so that I'm just gonna work on this leg right there. So let's go ahead and find a resistor. Okay, so like I said, the resistor goes from the positive to uh, the LED. So our next thing we need is an LED. And we can plug this in there where we have the anode of the LED is hooked to the resistor, okay? So because they're in the same um, column here. All right, and then the next thing is we need to hook up this Zener diode. Thankfully, there's a Zener diode for us. I'm gonna drag it over here. So you can see this is the anode of the Zener diode and this is the cathode of the Zener diode. And this is the cathode of the LED. So in this drawing, we need to attach cathode to cathode. So I need to flip the Zener diode over and it's gonna hook up there, but the other end of the Zener diode is gonna go into the negative. So that's what I did here. I connected this, so it is in the negative, okay, and connected cathode to cathode, right? So I hope you can see that is the loop we've made, right? Positive through the resistor, through the LED, through the Zener diode and to negative, right? That's this loop that we just created. Okay, and we can set the values here. Um, this one is going to be 500 ohm resistor. The Zener diode, we're gonna give it a 4.3 volts Zener diode. Okay, and actually I can go ahead and run this to show it's gonna work. So this is a nine volt battery. You'll lose 4.3 volts from the Zener diode. So that gives, you know, 4.7 volts that can power the LED, which should be plenty. And it does, so our LED is working, right? And so what would happen is if this nine volt battery had dropped down to like 4.5 volts, the Zener diode would take up 4.3 volts and there'd only be 0.2 volts to power the LED and it wouldn't really work, right? So that's why we increase the voltage on the Zener diode as we go across so that we can make sure that our battery is, is good at all those levels, right? And kind of what level it starts to go bad. So what I want you to see is then we're just hooking up the same circuit over and over again, right? So the next one here, this is the same node, right? All these are hooked to V power. There's one, two, three, four, five, six resistors that are hooked up to the positive power, right? So I can actually select one and hit copy and paste and I can stick another one over here that goes to the positive power, right? It's gonna be the same thing. I'm just gonna hit copy and paste on the LED. Okay, that sticks our uh, LED right there. And then we need another Zener, di Zener diode. Again, I can just copy 
and paste, control C and control V. Right, and so the only thing difference here is this center diode is 4.7 volts. Okay, again, I can run to make sure both of these should light because again, the, the battery is nine volts. So we'll hit start, they both light. Okay, and I hope that makes sense that that, that is what we have uh, drawn right here. And now we're just gonna keep adding more rows. One, two, three, four more rows. Fortunately, I can actually select all these by holding down the shift button as I click them. Hit control C, hit control V. And I could paste these here. Control V, there, control V, there. Right there. Okay, now I just need to change the values of the center diodes to make them work. So this is 5.1. 5.6, 6.2, and 6.8. Okay, so by the time we get to this last one, the Zener diode's taking up 6.8 volts, so that only leaves 2.2 uh, .2 volts left to power the LED, which is we're kind of getting on the limit of where the nine volt battery can power. So if we had start simulation, you can see this last one is a little bit dimmer than the others, right? Because that 2.2 volts is like, is getting near the minimum to power, right? So if these are all lit, we're pretty happy that we have a working nine volt battery. So that's just a great circuit tester. You can kind of get a sense of how, um, how good your nine volt battery is. Again, the simulation here is simulating a perfect battery um, but you might be testing a battery that's less than perfect, so you might see some of these light up and not the, the highest ones. If you want to see that, we can actually do this in uh, Tinkercad 2. Instead of the battery, I can put a function generator in here. And again, I'll, I'll just put positive to positive, negative to negative. Um, we'll set up, I'm just going to do a frequency of one hertz, so they're going to pulse on and off. Uh, and this is where we would think about like how much we need. So I think the max DC offset you can have is five volts. Okay, so if I do this, this will have five volts DC offset, and then it will have uh, five more amplitudes, so that's plus and minus 2.2, 2.5 volts. So in other words, the max will be 7.5 volts, the min will be 2.5 volts in this signal. You know, it's a sine wave. Actually, I wanna make it a sine wave. Um, so I'm going to increase my amplitude a little bit so we can get all the way up to nine volts. So if I put eight here, right, that will go from, uh, the, so it, again, that'll be plus four and minus four. So that will go from one volt up to nine volts. And we can see what happens with the lights, uh, as we do this function generator. So let's start the simulation. Right. So you can see they're lighting up as you get more power. And then as you go down, it's turning off the lights. So all right, pretty cool battery tester we just made.